So we're here at a property along the lake shore in southern Norfolk County, just on the shores of Lake Erie, where Long Point Basin Land Trust is going to construct another of its snake hibernacula sites. Uh, this is an overwintering habitat that's aimed to help species at risk. Uh, snakes such as the eastern fox snake, which is endangered, or the grey rat snake, or milk snake. We've now built close to 15 of these hibernacula uh, around Norfolk County. And our goal when we're picking a location is one, we obviously want to put a hibernaculum in a spot generally located in a region where we have these snakes present. But the most important thing we're looking to do is to put the habitats in a site that reduces the risk for the snakes. So try to put them in a spot close to a nat natural habitat uh, that'll give them a safe spot that avoids hazards like roads or active agricultural areas. It takes about a couple of days to install one of these. There's heavy equipment involved, lots of material as we'll see. So we want to make sure that it's a wise investment that's going to help species at risk. So we've got a spot. This is for wintering habitat, so we want to have a spot that's got good sunning locations, so when the snakes come out of their hibernation, they'll have spots they can warm up in the sunshine in early spring. So a good meadow uh, next to a natural area, a ravine or woodland is a prime spot. A lot of snakes look for habitats that are underground for their wintering locations. So spots that have uh, upturned logs, uh, rotting logs, any spot that gives them some moisture and some warmth during the cold winter months. What we're trying to do is to create these habitats. Interestingly, although our area has uh, more woodland than some other parts of southern Ontario, about 25% of our area is actually in natural cover, woodlands and wetlands. But what's missing in a lot of areas are these underground cavities or caverns where they can overwinter. This is why sometimes a fox snake or a milk snake or a rat snake will get itself into trouble by going close to the foundation of a house or old barn. So we're going to excavate a hole into the ground and create a series of chambers under the ground. The ground retains some heat and some moisture throughout the winter, so that's a good spot for them to uh, spend those winter months safely. The two most important factors when building a hibernaculum are probably the general sighting or location of the hibernaculum. Drainage is another really important factor when constructing a hibernaculum. While you want the hole uh, to be a little bit moist, that's good for the snakes for their overwintering, you want it to be moist but you don't want it to flood rapidly because you could accidentally drown the snakes. They are able to move up and down, and sometimes they will overwinter in an old cobble well. But what you don't want to do is create a, a deep hole that will flood rapidly because you could cause the snakes harm. So what the soil is like and what the slope is around the site is really important. In this case, we've just started into the excavation. As you can see, there's actually more clay in this than we probably would like. It's, uh, it's pretty heavy loam, so that means what we'll want to do is uh, design the site so that we can include some drainage. So we're going to dig this hibernaculum into a gentle slope and make sure that when we're finishing the construction that we've got some drainage down the hill. So we're just working with the topography naturally to overcome the fact that the soil is not quite as sandy as we would like. One of the things that's really important to do when you're constructing a hibernaculum is to be able to make changes on, on the go because every site is different. The topography is different, the soil is different, so what you could do on a nice rolling sandy site is different from what you might have to do if you encounter heavier soils such as ha has happened here. We're into a lot more clay in the, in the soil than we had anticipated. So what we want to do is we're going to create a trench and you can just see it behind me, a long trench that we're running to just a, a little, little bit of a depression farther uh, south. We're going to take a trench and put a tile, a drainage tile in that trench to make sure that we have drainage out of the hibernaculum. And in fact, once we put the drainage tile, this big old piping into that trench, uh, it's possible that snakes will even use that as a way to get in and out of the hibernaculum once it's completed. 
you'll see that we've got a number of things in the bottom of the hole. We actually bring in some, some washed stone or, or coarse gravel. It holds, this mix holds a little bit of moisture and a bit of moisture is good for the reptiles over the winter. But it also, because it's coarse, allows for some drainage. As we know, drainage is a big issue. Concrete block or cinder block is a really good building material when you're starting to build up the hibernaculum. Because the block, because of the way it's, it's made, has got these holes. So if you lay concrete block, it doesn't have to be new, it could be used. It's often salvaged material if we can find it. When that lies on its side, it means that any of the material we put on top is on different angles. The snakes could go through the holes. And what we're going to do now as we build the hibernaculum up is to have all of these interconnected passageways. We want the snakes to be able to move up through the hibernaculum in and out at different layers because they may want to go deep during the coldest part of the winter. They may want to come up a little bit in the hibernaculum. So it's essential that the material is gradually placed in with all of these interconnected passages. One of the things that we do to sort of a bit of a fail safe or an emergency exit, I sometimes call it, is we actually build into the hole this uh, big old piping or tile drainage. And we actually cut some extra holes and we bring those piping right up to the surface so that if it settles hard or gets packed in, we know that snakes could always move to the surface through this big old piping. So we're just at the, the starting part of putting all the pieces together. So drainage, block at the bottom so we've got open spaces, emergency exits in the pipe. And now what we're gonna start doing is adding big pieces of block and building the chamber higher and higher. We want openings but we don't want it so open that in the cold part of the winter, cold air comes in too fast. So the next step is to start building in the big pieces of concrete. We've got broken bits of foundation. We've got some tree roots and stuff like that. And we're gonna start building it up to the surface now. We're now at a point where we have the majority of the material back into the uh, excavation and as you can see we've incorporated a lot of different kinds of material. The concrete block with the openings has ensured some passages. We've been placing old uh, waste concrete slabs on different angles to create these chambers at different heights. What we don't want to have is the concrete just in, like stacks of pancakes because that would allow would not allow the openings. The other thing that you see we can we're incorporating as much as we can and you really have to work with what's on site is a lot of old stumps and logs. This is fantastic. We've got a lot of old rotting trunks and stumps that we're putting right into the hole and up to the surface. That's allowing some openings in the hole, but the other thing that's going to happen is over time, these big stumps are going to rot out. And as they rot, they, they'll decompose. They'll actually be a little bit warmer because decomposition gives off heat. So that's gonna be openings. Snakes like to hide in these openings. And in fact, because we're up close to the surface, some of these may rot at the surface and be warm over the summer. So we, we may actually be creating nesting habitat in the summer, as well as creating a hibernaculum. Once you're finished with the, the rough construction of the hibernaculum site, and all the material has been placed into the hole, and you've looked after the drainage, it really doesn't look so much like there's anything there. Obviously there's rocks and we have stumps incorporated, but it looks, uh, especially after one growing season, pretty undisturbed. And you might say, well, I, I can't see any openings. How are the snakes going to find their way in? Well, because we've got big bulky items in the hole, 
there are actually lots of openings here and there. So for example, here there's crevices down in connecting to those underground chambers. We want there to be openings, of course, so the snakes can find it and winter safely underground, but we don't want it to be so open that uh, the cold air uh, will fall into the hole and uh, not give them the protection they need. So we've got the right mix, we hope, of open spaces and protection. And we've got crevices like that. And then we also uh, incorporated that uh, black piping, four inch diameter black piping in. So we've got three or four sort of emergency exits, if you will, that the snakes could use as well. And as time passes, this will settle, things will start to rot out, the ground may uh, settle a little bit, and so there'll be openings here and there that the snakes will find. So I have this uh, data logger here, and this is a temperature probe. Uh, this particular one actually measures temperature uh, both at this end and at this end. So what we do at some of our sites is to see uh, how well our hibernacula are performing temperature wise. Uh, we'll take this end and we'll lower it down through a specially designed uh, tube or a, a hole that we design into the hibernaculum and we'll leave this one at the surface and they will record the temperature throughout the whole winter and we'll come back in the spring and we can take the data straight off of here or we can remove it, take it back to the office and look at it on the computer and uh, it'll show us uh, how the temperature varied throughout the winter both at the surface and about five or six feet under and uh, it can show if it's maintaining a warm enough temperature that the, the snakes uh, can survive uh, in there through the winter or if modifications might need to be made to uh, improve conditions down there. I'm sitting at the site of another hibernaculum that uh, Long Point Basin Land Trust built. This site uh, was constructed one year ago. As you can see, there really is not much of a clue that there's anything here. But in fact, we have a, a, a hibernaculum with a deep, deep cavity that's almost uh, two meters deep and perhaps three meter or four meter diameter. This site is quite different from the, the site where we're, we were just doing the construction. It was different in a number of ways. One is that it's really sandy soil. It's just beautiful, soft and loose yellow sand. So the issues that we had at the other location with the clay uh, and drainage really were not an issue at all. We excavated the hole down to a good depth and just the drainage just naturally will flow away from the site. So in a way, this is a lot easier site to construct. We're still in an opening, a small opening for sunshine next to a wooded area. And in fact, we're right along a major creek valley and a cold water stream. Even though you might not see it, there are a whole series of interconnected chambers down below me. One of our little exits through the, the big old piping is just right here. And through the top, the rotting stumps and large stones and slabs of concrete all provide this entrance to the interconnected chambers. When you're thinking of building a hibernaculum, we know it's really important to pick a good location, a spot that's close to a natural area, an opening for sunning. But one of the other things to think about is when are you going to do the construction? Our preference is actually to do the construction in the very late fall or early winter. And there's a few reasons why we do that. One of the reasons is it gives us the whole preceding spring and summer and fall to monitor the site, to sense, is it a good location? Are there any snakes there uh, presently? What could we do to improve upon the habitat? Uh, another advantage is by doing it late in the fall is that we can uh, be sure that we're not going to, desert, to disturb any snakes on the site. By the time we do our construction, the snakes are already hibernating at different locations. So we know we're not going to cause any harm that way. The last reason why it's really beneficial to do it in the early winter is that uh, we want to know where the water table is uh, during those winter months. Uh, the water in the ground or the water table moves up and down 
uh, throughout the year. If it's a really dry summer, the water table falls and it can be very deep before you hit water. But in the winter, the water level usually comes up in the ground. Moisture in the hole is a great thing that keeps it humid, that's good for the snakes, but a little bit is good and a lot is bad. So you don't want the water to come up really high. So by constructing in late fall or early winter, we'll have a really good sense of where the water is sitting in the ground and we can adjust our construction techniques accordingly. Hibernaculum, it's a big project to do it well. What we're trying to do is recreate habitats in uh, the natural environment and help with things that are missing. We don't have a lot of places for these rare snakes to winter. They like to get into underground caverns, they like rotting materials and places that they can hide. So this is a good location geographically and there's a great diversity of habitat. We know that we've got um, species at risk that we're helping by constructing these hibernaculum.